Fam, I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. I am Michael. This video is sponsored by Masterworks, the only investing platform dedicated to art investing. We love Masterworks. We love so Banksy, we... Picasso, Warhol, so we love Masterworks. I'm going to Bar Barcelona next week. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in Barcelona right now. You and uh, there's a lot of Picasso there. Uh, I personally can speak for you guys. I yeah. cannot afford to buy a Picasso at the moment, um, but I can afford to download uh, Masterworks, create yes. an account, yes. and, and invest in Picasso and yeah. reap all the benefits from uh, from investing in Picasso, okay? You know what I should do? I'm, uh, you know, I'm gonna buy Picasso yeah. when I go home tonight through yeah. Masterworks, and when I'm there with Sally, uh, yeah. I'm gonna say, uh, you know, uh, I recently, you know, I recently, I recently acquired this. Picasso. They're gonna have to be moving this to New York soon. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> the shipping believe? fees are. Yeah. Taylor and I, when I was in Denmark, had a joke. We were at a museum, and there was a Picasso that, like, we probably. I was like, you know, he's he's way. He's not like that irrelevant. Like he was not. He was alive not too long ago. Yeah. And she was like, oh, I know. And the way she said it, I was like, did you, did you have a thing with Picasso? She's like, no. Oh, yeah, well, Sally, no. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole time, we, we had a joke of, like, he's, like, walking around the museum, and he's like, oh, ta Taylor Hale? And I'm like, oh, God. Oh, this meanwhile, he was a womanizer. I know. That's, that's, right. that's where the joke came from. Tremendous. I was like, oh, of all she, people, uh, Pablo. Yeah, you're like, you're like, oh, my God, look at this Picasso. And she's like... I'm not interested. It's a naked girl like this. Yeah, it's I'm her. Like, You're like, what the f***? <laughs> Taylor, that looks a lot like you. She's like, please. Pl please. He totally missed the mark. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, today... Hi, Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Never, just, no, it's hey, okay. She didn't watch fine. my own videos. It's fine. Today, we're talking about, most notably at the end, the Tissot Powermatic 80 PRX. And... You can't even look at me after I say Boring! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and uh, I wrote down, is the new Rolex. Obviously, it's not the new Rolex, but it has a fanatic following. It's mm -hmm. cheap, and now it and it cheaper. evokes a lot of Rolex uh, It evokes a lot style, of Rolex energy, yeah. which we'll get into. But it's that, that, we talked about it before, that thing that all of a sudden it's like, oh, wait a minute. This is affordable and great, and Rolex is unobtainable yep. and getting more expensive. Yep. Like. This is cool. I'll check out that. Tissot is literally the un like the underdog no one expected, which I suppose is what an underdog is. But yeah, but this is like off the map. Yeah. Uncle put $100 in the Kentucky Derby, the guy that, the one that didn't, uh, the 80 to 1, and he won eight grand. <laughs> no. I can't believe that. No. Uh, Uncle Sam, if you're watching this, it's, it's enough with you and the luck. Yeah. All right? You're yeah. pissing me off. So we'll talk about that. That is our ending note, but we're talking about another watch that is reborn from the 70s, the Hamilton Kaki. Kaki? Ka the Kaki? Kaki. Oh, my God. Uh, Aviation Pioneer. And then this funky watch, I figure we'll talk about super quick, the Louis Erard and Alan Silverstein. Yes, very cool. Can you cool. tell this is an episode written by me? It's none, yeah. none cool watches. Alan Silverstein. Yeah. What a name. What a name. I wonder what he likes on his bagel. <laughs> Why'd you cough? That's not anti-Semitic. I was trying to kill myself. <laughs> it's, it, it's just obviously he's Jewish. No, I'm That's Jewish. It. I've seen Succession. Yeah. How's that going? Fantastic. Oh, oh my God. I can't wait. I'm almost done. Can't make a Tama without breaking some, breaking some Greg's. <laughs> you emailed from the hours of 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. Can't make a Tama without break, breaking some Greg's 82 times. And you do not know him? No. No. I'd like to answer the affirmative if that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Anyways, that is that is what is on the list today. The last two things, we're going to tie in the Teenage Wash Up because these are both reissues from the 70s when you can get a real thing from the Teenage Wash Up. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. It'll make me so get much money. Get to it. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. What do you think of the Louis Erard x Alan Silverstein? I, I love Alan Silverstein. I, I, I mean, he's done a lot of collaborations and a lot of different things. This is Fantastic. probably my favorite. Fantastic. Yeah, it's so cool. You know, if you you could buy, these are all sold out now, but you buy both of these in a set. Get out. So if we ever want to split, How it's much about they? four grand each, a little less. Oh, they're amazing. I yeah. would get one in a second. Oh, yeah. I mean, splitting good. that, that's, oh, that's our amazing. watch. 40 millimeters, perfect. Yep. This, um, there's not really too, too much to say about the watches themselves. It's a Salida movement. Movement inside. Yeah, it's not the point. It's, it's the, the style, design, right? right? This is that watch where, if money's not an issue, this is my fun watch. This is a watch I just want. I feel like is very like, just cool. A little out there. You go to museums on the weekends and stuff like that. 
And Alan Silverstein's watches are. Yeah, I, I, I love a lot that. Of collaborations are cool. Yeah. Oh, it's so nice. I love the bold colors. Like, look at that on the wrist. I think so it looks cool. fantastic. Even the case design is brilliant. That's a mono pusher. Oh wow! Yeah, wow, that's very cool. The smiley faces change, and that's how you know what day of the week it is. Oh, different like, smiley faces. Never Monday, remember that, but no, sure. never. But the um, the straps are awesome too. The straps are awesome. The way it's integrated is awesome. Just a cool looking watch. Oh, it's a terrific watch. Okay. Anyways. That's that. We'll get into the 70s, but real quick, this video is sponsored by Masterworks. If you like to invest and you want to diversify outside of stocks, watches, or real estate or something like that, the art market has been on a tear. Well, how much of a tear, you may be asking? Well, with stocks going down and the crypto market itself basically having, there was a 20th, 21st century sale at Christie's, and we're looking at prices like 75 million for a Monet, 66 million for a Rothko, 56 for another Monet, 54 for a Pollock, 52 for a Van Gogh, 48 for a Picasso. And between the Ann Bass collection and the 20th century evening sale, Christie's sold $831,261,500 worth of art in one night. All the billionaires are parking their money in art, and now you can too with Masterworks. Yeah, Masterworks is basically you know half a technology company and, and half a you know a, 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 like an art curation company. I mean, they're they're equal parts, but it's a perfect marriage of these things, right? Yeah. So basically, they're em empowering basically fractional ownership, right? So people mm -hmm. like you and I, people that you know, yes, we're interested in investing in things, but certainly don't have a hundred million dollars or whatever it may be yeah. to buy an important piece of art, and even they go for even more than that. Uh, you're basically able to create an account. On masterworks, obviously deposit funds, yes, and course. then buy fractional pieces or fractions rather mm -hmm. uh, of these incredible pieces of art, yeah. uh, and obviously benefit uh, at sale. Right? When they when they go to sale, you get to you know you get, get, your, get your money, right? you get yeah. your money. But well, what happens if you want out of a piece uh, before it goes to sale? Before Masterworks deems its maturation to be complete, right? Before they sell it, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, you can actually you know through their through their platform um, sell your fraction to mm -hmm. another Masterworks user. And it was an incredibly smart decision by them yeah. because it makes the entire process that much less, um, or that much more like comfortable and familiar. Yeah, right. Exactly. Because if you're getting into stock, it's, it's up to you when you want to get out. When you're buying into things like a watch, um, and you are a partner, mm -hmm. you and you're a minority partner, you have no say when that watch goes to sell. And I've had yeah. to deal with that with clients before as well. Yeah. Um, so this was a this is a great play. Um, I love Masterworks. I've invested in Masterworks. Not only has it been a profitable experience for myself and many others, um, but I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of person that is always craving knowledge and, and really looking to study and learn mm -hmm. and, um, and, and uh, learn about new uh, art forms, really, is what I'm interested in. I'm interested in art, yeah. and, um, and I consider watches art, but this is, this is even you know, more This is literally... It's literally art, right? Yes. Yeah, and um, I, I think this is a fantastic company. I highly recommend that you guys make an account, highly. And the nice part is, if it gets you investing, that's incredibly important, but the best part about that is, since 2020, Masterworks has actually sold three paintings, each returning over 30% net IRR to investors, and their new offerings usually sell out in hours. So yep. it's a big thing. It's not like you're playing around and you're getting okay returns. Yep. You are getting good returns. So head on over to masterworks.art slash Theo Harris to sign up now. Go ahead and do that. And thank you to Masterworks for, uh, for partnering us on this video. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next conversation. 70s are coming back, baby. The 70s are back. Tell my dad. I'll be thrilled. I'll let him know right away. Yeah. Do you like milk? Do you like milk? Milk was a bad choice. What? What are you saying? One day I walked into Christian's oh, house. Oh, my dad. My yeah, dad. Yeah. One day I walked into Christian's house and his dad goes, hey, Mike, how's it going? I'm like, good, good. Can't complain. Nice weather outside. He's like, yeah. You like milk, right? <laughs> and I was like, what? And he's like, like dairy milk? You like milk? And I was like, yeah. I love my dad, but he sometimes lacks interpersonal skills. <laughs> yeah, he goes, good. Good. I was like, yeah. no. He was probably curious because Michael, you don't eat meat or fish. So yeah, that's exactly. He was probably curious if milk was if, if milk was on the vegan, list. I yeah, suppose. right. Oh my god. Do, so do you? Uh, you eat honey? You like? <laughs> you eat honey? Cause what? Yeah. Cause bees. You what, eat it? What about bees? You suck on honey? You want to suck on my honey? <laughs> like what the? F I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm I got a Mercedes. Mercedes. I, 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 <laughs> gotta get in the car. Get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the Hamilton Khaki Aviation Pioneer. Love this watch. 40 millimeter watch. Love the case. The case, dude. The, the dial hands. has a lot of character. The hands are Fobatina. All about that. How Especially much is this watch? 
Two thousand dollars. Oh. So boom. this is what we're getting into in a second, but two thousand dollars to get this reissue. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stuff in the shop, and just in general, in the vintage world, mm-hmm. that if this doesn't suit your fancy, will suit your fancy. So we'll get into that in a second, but 60-hour power reserve issued originally issued to the British Royal Air Force. Mm-hmm. It was a millimeter and a half smaller. Mm-hmm. So this is 40 millimeters, I think 30, 38.5. Yep. This specific version is 40, like I said, 100 meters water resistance. Fantastic watch. Beautiful watch. And beautiful to me because it has that vintage charm. I agree. You know, you've got so, so many, uh, so many brands. Almost every major brand has done vintage reissues in the last five years, um, yeah. and that's great. I think that's terrific. I recommended I mean, them. We're talking about two today. This, in the, and this, this one's great. There's so many great vintage reissues, but it does beg the question: if you are so interested in watches that look vintage. Why don't you try a vintage watch? Yeah, right. And the, the answer to that question really is just a lack of, of comfort and knowledge, right? It was a lack of comfort. And the lack of comfort is a product of lack of knowledge. Um, because if you are knowledgeable... Which I understand vintage, in the beginning. Totally. Yeah. And if you're if you're knowledgeable about vintage watches, you probably think that it's a, you know, it's a you know, scary world or it's, it's they're going to break and you can't use them. And that's completely untrue. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're buying from reputable sellers, uh, those watches are completely serviced, completely reliable. I wear vintage watches every single day. I have never had a, I've never broken a vintage watch. And anything, anything anytime a watch has ever needed service, yeah. I have never had a problem servicing a watch. Never. Yeah. They're incredibly reliable. Um, I mean, you can even go to like, specifically brands like Omega. Yeah. I mean, the availability for parts and everything, when that day does come, and people recommend you service your watch once every, you know, five to ten years. Right. Um, and sometimes they don't even need it, you know, which is amazing. Yeah, and um, and 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 the the the, the movements are incredible, mm-hmm. right? Take a look at the Seamaster chronometer that we have in the shop right now. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, look at look look at this watch. This is from 1968, which yeah. makes it how old? 54. 54 years. There you go. I knew it. <laughs> I told you. Uh, I 54, told you. 54 years old, and yet not only is the is the watch basically immaculate. I mean, the dial is just is just gorgeous. On um, so there's the smooth bezel, but yep. the movement, which is a is a 500 series caliber, which was the so the best movements Omega made at the time, maybe one of the best series of the best series of movement. Yeah. You know, yep. um, running flawlessly. We're talking about to this day chrono- chronometer spec. To this yep. day, they're running, you know, within Crown specifications. Yep. Amazing! What a, I mean, what a testament to Omega. Yeah, not right. only I mean now, but then it, it's it's unbelievable. Oh yeah, I mean, you look at, at this price range for vintage watches is your sweet spot. Obviously, you can go up, you can get, you can go down, but this is you're getting the best brands. Oh yeah, and. At the time, the best brand's best watch. You're getting a chronometer Seamaster. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then going into Rolex, obviously, you know, uh, around the two to four thousand dollar mark, you know, you've got you've got dates and date just thirty four millimeter and thirty six millimeter watches, which for me are fantastic, and same, I think for you same. as well. Oh yeah. Um, but you've got so much value. Right, which is really what initially sparked my interest in vintage yeah. watches. Same here. Yeah, originally it wasn't even the history. It was, oh, I can afford this. Same. Little did I, I can realize. I get Omega on my wrist. Oh my God. Yeah. Little did I realize they were, I mean, infinitely more important and more interesting. And in many, in most cases, they are more important and more interesting. Yeah. Um, and and what was more approachable was actually even better quality in many instances. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but that was what struck my interest. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, look at the, these Piagets as well. Obviously, they're they're polarizing because they're so formal, but it's the same idea, right? Just ultra fine watchmaking. Yeah, Piaget ultra thin, ultra thin. Watches. IWC Calatrava. Ooh. IWC Calatrava. I, IWC is another brand, tremendous value, twenty four hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, and and uh, again, like you walk into IWC is a luxury watch brand. It's a luxury watch brand. Yeah, of course. Getting a dress watch like that, and I paired it on a suede strap because it it. Made it more casual. This strap on uh, this watch on a alligator strap, and it's another thing. I mean, it's 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 a, oh it's yeah, a it's a watch, right? You know, yeah. but on a suede strap, everyday watch from an IWC brand with a long font. Like, I love the long. Font. I get excited about this stuff. Yes, I get excited font. about value in vintage watches. Yeah, you know, consistently. Yeah. So um, yeah, they're they're terrific examples. This Hamilton as well. That's right? the, that's one I specifically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a W10. W10. That is an original W10. It's right? an original W10. Fantastic condition. Yeah. So that's that's obviously I wanted to show you the new Hamilton coming out, but definitely want to say check out the vintage side of things too, because if yep. you really like the reissue, chances are there is well, there's obviously original, but unless it's a very very famous watch, it's yeah. not going to be way more expensive. Exactly. And typically, that fake charm that they have to add will be just 
regular. Exactly. Vintage watch. Exactly. So, so head on over to the Theo and Harris shop. Uh, check out the watches and educate yourself. Yes. And then obviously the strap shop to uh, to pick up a strap or a watch roll, uh, any leather goods for your uh, for your watch needs. Yeah. Because uh, both the watch shop and the strap shop both chef's kiss. Ten out of ten. Yep. Head on over, check them out, shoot me an email if you have any questions. I'm there to answer. My mom ships everything out. Ships them out with love. We love them. Ships them with love. All over the world. All over the world. Frankly, they're all over the world. Hey, honey. How are you? Yeah. Hey, honey. What are you doing? What are you doing? You around? Last but not least, because this is the biggest point of the video, the Tissot PRX. The little, all of a sudden, well, not little, to slap in the face all of a sudden where it's like, Wait a minute, this is a great deal. It's got an 80 hour power reserve, 40 millimeters. Even if I wanted to get at least a little bit of gold on the watch, I can mm -hmm. for less than $2,000. Mm -hmm. 100 meters water resistance. It can stand up to everyday life. What is going on here? Yes. And uh, I mean, it shows. Anybody on YouTube looking for the Tissot PRX has a lot of views. It's yep. very, very, very popular. Yep. And for good reason. Surface, yeah, mm -hmm. surface level, why? I mean, it's a date just alternative with a royal oak dial. I mean, you know, it's it's, it's what it is. simultaneously a date just alternative, simultaneously a AP alternative, oh, simultaneously yeah. kind of a paddock, kind of a hublot. Like obviously certain hublots, yeah, but right. like Zenit Defy is in there. Everything's oh, yeah. in there for under two thousand dollars, even if you have a gold bezel. No one has given a shit about Tissot, and I, I don't know how long. I I, I, I know. Never in my life has anyone given about to sell never yeah some someone would buy it to sell and that's great they're good watches and whatever but no, the visit date the, the, what, the what visit they date. were before was i'm new to watches i have two thousand dollars to spend what's my what's what can i can get I, right i buy a swiss watch and you're in yeah, macy's you're Tissot. like you can get it to sell you can yes. get it this you can get now it it's like oh you actually now you, you have the can, prx you can right. get it but like they're sold like we only have one left yeah if you want it you can have it but like don't sit on it. And they went even further because there's a quartz model for half the price. It's incredible. So, yeah. I, I would buy one of these watches in two seconds. Literally two seconds. It's a beautiful watch. Yeah. It's a watch that makes you think if you have a good amount of money, you're yeah. like, oh, well, I should just get oh, one. Yeah. If you're saving up, you're like, well, this is definitely the one I want to get. Yep. So, what's interesting is that at one point, Rolexes were always expensive. Mm -hmm. That's never think they were cheap. Mm -hmm. But at one point, a Rolex was a little bit more in that market, mm -hmm. where it was like, oh yeah, I like, I'm saving up. I want to get a nice watch. I like the Rolex. This, I feel like, as of right now, is close to that. Mm -hmm. If we go back to the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, whatever, when your grandfather and everybody was like, oh yeah, this is this is my trusty Rolex. Yep. Do you agree with that? I, I, I you know. Rolex, Rolex has been a status symbol for so so long yeah. that you have to go back to like the fifties and the sixties. Early, yes, yes, yeah, yes. to go back to when it was just a really good watch. Mm -hmm. Because once you hit the seventies and eighties, even the eighties were really the the end of it. But it's a Rolex. even the seventies, it became a Rolex. Is it? What movie was that? The guy he gives it to the taxi driver. Gives his Rolex to a taxi driver. I don't know. I never saw the movie. He can't get some. There, there's a guy can't get somewhere. He's like, I'll give you this. I'll give you the Rolex. I'll give you the Rolex. And oh, the taxi driver drives I, yeah, yeah. I kind of remember hearing about something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you got you know, for, for, from the '70s and on, it was all over for Rolex. But back then, I mean, you know, people wanted a reliable, you know, reliable, elegant watch, you know, and Rolex was certainly the name. Yeah. You know, um, but after that, it became just about kind of about wealth, you know, which of course. kind of is today. It's more of a jewelry brand in many ways. Now it's the president's watch. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, but but yeah, in a way, I mean, I, I see where you're going. Uh, it definitely ticks all the same boxes. The brilliance of the date just, which I think is the brilliance of the PRX and it's because they took it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, we, we cannot absolve ourselves from saying this is a copycat dial yes. bracelet style, yes. everything. But the, you know, the brilliance of the PRX or rather the date just was it's an elegant watch that is still a little bit sporty right right on a bracelet right. yep. it's still a little it's still it's not a calatrava yes right exactly um and and rolex's quote calatrava the cellini never had the appeal that the date just had never even close yeah right because right? it was too of one thing it was too, too it was much too far that way yeah whereas the role the date just was just a little bit more in the middle like it's just a little bit more the bezel is sparkly yes but but the bracelet it's is tough yes it's a little that. thicker than a calatrava it's not a dress watch yes it's an everyday watch right it's an elegant gentleman's successful elegant gentleman's everyday watch yes you know and that's what the prx kind of is you know what I would like to see them do because they're not there yet. Yep. You know they need to. They need to make 
a, a splash into this is I think we talked about this before. They need to make a splash into desirability into or rather like rather like icon like um envy status. Solid gold PRX. I would buy that. Deliver uh, 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 I know it would be very difficult to stock that because it's just too much of an investment. Of course. Uh, I would say you could do a six month wait and I believe people would buy it. Would and, you? And I would buy it. So would keep I? the price really low. Really low. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I don't know how, how cheaply they could produce that, but I'm talking low, like under ten thousand dollars. Shockingly low. Yeah, I yes. see nine thousand. And you only you're only gonna make X amount, a very small number, and they're six month wait and whatever, um, and one dial. And then maybe next year you do another run. Yep. Rose or something like that. Yeah. But I really think that that could be like a, like a collector's item. Same. Same. Now you're wearing the yellow gold PRX. Yeah, you're Which wearing is insane. Exactly. Yes. You're wearing... I don't think they should go the way of making more expensive movements. I think that that's it's a lot of hogwash in many instances. This is an ETA based movement. That's it. It's a yeah. good movement. It's a good, reliable, serviceable movement that everyone everyone loves. Yep. Which. Keep it there. If you said, and this is this is the alternative ending, if you said, no, this is not the Rolex, what do you think this is? And I'll give you a hint if you need it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, what, the, 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 the tutor? I mean, you know, it's a tutor. Re, reused yeah. case. Yeah. And uh, ETA cheap movement. Exactly. That is the exact formula of tutor. Exactly. This is just without Rolex's, like, kiss of approval. Yes. But we'll take the case, we'll take the dial from AP, and then we'll get a cheaper movement so yep. we can have an approachable price and make a great watch. I think it's terrific. I, yeah. I, I, you know, it's it's very difficult for a brand that no one ever gave a shit about to begin to earn clout. Yes. You know, very, because you're, very you're difficult. carrying baggage. Yeah. You know, you're carrying baggage. Robert Downey Jr. What is this? A Seiko? Yeah, right. Oh my right. God! You never get rid of that. That never goes away. Yeah, right. So uh, anyway, I, I love this. I think it's terrific. I definitely want one. If they made one in yellow gold, I would buy it. I, I really think yellow, that's yeah. true. Yellow on yellow. Give me a yellow gold with yellow yellow dial waffle. The same thing. Done. Yeah, done. I'll buy it. I'll give you. I'll give you ten grand max. I'll give you ten grand right now. But. And that's going to shoot me an email now. We'll make one for you alone and be like, you know, yeah, like, well, yeah. that's okay. well, I, well, 9,000. <laughs> no, but I mean it. I, I think this is a terrific watch. And yeah. you're right. It's a Tudor. Yeah. So, so, you know, so why is it okay when Tudor does it, not when Rolex? Well, Tudor runs the design through Rolex. Okay, fine. But this yeah. is more than that. They did, they did, they did turn up the heat a little bit. Yeah. You know, they, they put some thought power, some brain power into the development. Yep. Some. Oh, yeah. Not a ton, but some. Yeah, exactly. I'm glad to see it. I'm glad that I'm rooting for the underdogs. Hey, good for you. Is that it? That's it. That's all I have. All right. Head over to the Theo and Harris Watch Shop if you're yeah. looking to shop vintage watches from Rolex, from Omega, predominantly. From Tudor as well, of course. But fantastic stuff. Yeah. Vintage straps. Not vintage straps. New straps. New straps. Vintage watches. New straps. Dusty baby. old straps. Dusty old Theo straps. TheoandHarrisWatch.com. Yeah. Foreskin straps. Hey, there's a market. There's a market. There's a market. Let's do there's a market. market. <laughs> you know, one of the best. Um, uh, you ever hear uh, Jerry Seinfeld's best... Uh, uh, it, was like, it was like a goy joke, but it was, it was a Jewish joke. It was a goy joke, and it was—I told you this one before, right? I don't know. And it was, um, uh, you know, two two goys walk into each other and say, "Oh, how are you?" Uh, well, I'm, rather, I'm sorry. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Oh, how's business? And he goes, "It's great. How are you?" That would never happen with two Jewish guys. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a Jerry Seinfeld joke. It's it's very very funny. Yeah. So so there you go. Hey. Anyway, Alan Silverstein. Thank you, Alan Silverstein, for that I love joke. your watches. I think it's terrific. Is I mean, he still alive? I don't know. Yeah. yeah, he's got to be. He's designing new watches. He's, he did, he's making watches. <laughs> you know what? You say that, but Jacques Drew has been dead for like 300 yeah, years. Yeah, true, so, true, you true. Know. But uh, no. Anyway, great stuff.